Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Fukayo Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we have Viego with some squishier itemization. But there is a reason for that, obviously, with the patch changes coming through this patch. Uh, we do have more damage from our squishy items. We do have more shields in general. And we have some more HP stacking items, like Steric's gains changing completely and losing all of its AD. So, or you could just be Riven and just become obnoxious because of the more of my Mortis and the Ravenous Hydra changes or buffs directly. So that's, that's a whole separate discussion. But in this one, Viego, different itemization, better itemization. Can you still go Divine Sunder? Of course. Can you still go Steric Gage? Situationally, of course. But Kraken Slayer should be more of a default go-to along with Blade of the Rune King. Anyway, let's talk about all of that and more throughout this entire gameplay. Do not forget, as uh, Viego you know, does that to the plant, that our bootcamp signup is in the pin des uh, pin description, top of the description, as well as the pin comment. That begins end of February. All the jungle knowledge full of lectures for myself, Nice, Polaris, and more. Don't forget to get your tickets. Runes would have been on your screen now. And yes, you would have seen the PTA page. I had to start again because I said Conqueror. Of course I did, because it's the default rune. But we are against a very squishy team comp that does a lot of damage. We do a lot of damage. Our team does a lot of damage. And that scaling from PTA is obscene as well as being very good early. Amp damage plus burst proc. Nidalee coming forth with a cheeky level 2 spear. That's why you drag out your cams, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let them stay in the pocket because Kindreds, Nidalees are going to expect you to be lazy as such. And they'll try these cheeky, uh, nonsensical infates in this matter. Soraka, thank you for warding. Thank you for protecting. We would have seen the spear come through the wall anyway. That's a nifty trick. Very nice. Don't have to waste a flash just yet. Let's see. Very good. Patience is rewarded. Now, don't rotate. You would have seen him waffling on the minimap a little bit. Don't force that rotation if it's looking super doomed or if they're looking super safe. The one advantage you have here is that the Nidalee is committing very high variance aggressive jungling. You can counter that simply by not replicating it or trying to match it. Just do some safe farming and, and camp clearing and experience absorption and she will be significantly behind and stymied if she doesn't get anything, which in this case, fortunately, she did not. Good job on the Soraka, good job on the Poppy. But they will be in a gold deficit and the Viego will have to do the most damage, so don't worry about that. Let's see how we go through this game. I like this flex into a 4 camp. Normally we would probably still look for a 5 camp, but with the Nidalee being a little bit loopy or Harley Quinn, it's good to do your red, protect yourself versus that. Move and look mid lane for potential gank, and then you can fall back to the Raptors. Very, very standard stuff, especially when you are afraid of you know, a four camp invade here. Maybe there are three camping and invading you. It doesn't really matter. But do the red and then the raptors. You accomplish the same thing with a bit more safety. Rise commits murder upon the gangplank. The Nidalee obviously would have fallen back into the blue side. Shows up. And there you go. And from a Viego's perspective, yes, it's good to rotate in these situations. Obviously, I just, I just reversed a few seconds to show you the perspective. But if he has no flash, if he's super doomed and low, that's fine. We see now the Nidalee. Shows up top lane, right, with, at that time, three camps, two buffs. We don't know if she did Wolves or Grump, but the fact that she's moving down here would indicate that she's most likely doing some other camp. So instead of worrying too much about which one it was, because we don't really care, let's just cut through mid lane and we can go and take the Raptor camp. This is good, aggressive jungling. Remember, before you change your itemization to whatever you're building, you're still the same champion, you know? You do have PTA instead of Conquer, but you're still the exact same champion. You don't have any itemization shift at this point. I love that aggressive, using the prow, cutting across, forcing that, that reaction from the Nidalee. We'll see what she does about it. And now you can transition this to a bot lane gank as well. Heal is burned, flash is still up, so we don't overcommit. That's why your F keys are so important. If you were 100% sure that they use their flash and you flash commit yourself, you end up just dead. You end up dead. That was an interesting W from the Kaiser. We'll take it. And now we move into the bottom side to secure this crab as well. The Nidalee, on the other hand, would basically see, okay, 24 CS, he did a 5 camp plus a crab. Um, I can take my Gromp and then I can just go back to the top side. Viego says, all right, thank you, Rise, for showing me that information. Back to base I go. You could do your Gromp into your Wolves here before you reset, but if you have crucial itemization spikes, it's important not to delay it. I think in this case, potentially... Um, Clearing that blue side into the Noon Quiver would be really, really useful, especially seeing as you're going Kraken Slayer. However, if Nidalee is camping topside and creating an uneven lane state where the Ryze was doing well by himself, it's important we try and counter gank this. Although I do think in this case, you know, there's not too much you could have done. So simply doing your blue side before resetting is, is fine. In this case, it would have gotten the same result anyway, right? I mean, the only benefit for you is that you're able to hold some waves, which we enjoy. But at the same time, you know, 
new quiver is such a big spike. There's no real true right and wrong here, but that's exactly that's where my mind is going. And obviously, if they do overstay here, now you can definitely kill them and fall back down to your, your raptors and so on. However, because we did that, we do get some good waves. We enjoy. New reset that one to semi-neutral. Move on down to our raptors, and then we can sequence down again, knowing that Nidalee's going to reset and most likely be in that area. One would think, at least. Being able to match an enemy jungle is huge. And on the main channel tomorrow, which will be live if you watch us at any point after the 24 hours it's released, Decision Making Test Season 12 2022 Edition. We're going to talk about this a lot because the direction you head from base and when exactly you do base has a lot of implica implications on the enemy jungler's game plan as well as yours. So in this case, we hold top lane and just if they overstayed, we're able to benefit. Now we see here that the Grump has disappeared and we just saw the particles disappear as we walked near the Grump. And here's the downside of that kind of play, you see. So if I pause this very quickly, the Nidalee is going super hyper aggressive. I don't usually like to pause these anymore because you guys like the flow. But if you take this and reset, you get Noon Quiver most likely. And now you can afford to basically say, should I rotate top or should I go directly to my Raptors? Look for something mid lane if possible. And then obviously you can always flex into this invade should Nidalee shrub down here because you've got nothing up. You've literally nothing up. But she makes this play because she knows what you did based upon you showing top lane. And it's a good secure by Nidalee to stay relevant in the game, considering she compromised herself quite severely with those early camps. A lot of things going on in this game. It's interesting. I like it. Now, remember, Divine Sunderer still works. I just don't think it's nearly as good as it was. End of story. The lack of HP means you lose a lot of um, natural survivability. And obviously, the, the Sterics gauge change is giga huge. There's no scaling a bonus AD whatsoever anymore. There's no AD given to it. It's not based upon your HP. Oh, now it is based upon your H HP. Excuse me, that shield. So if you're not building a lot of HP, you're not getting a lot of value out of it. But the shield with the HP itself can still be useful if you're going a bit more of those new itemization choices like Kraken Slayer, Light of the Rune King, Dust Dance, Move of Mordias. None of them have HP. So if you build Sterex Gauge, that 500 HP is still very, very useful, right? Of course it is. Because you have resistances, now you need a bit of HP to bring that up. And of course, now you have super shields. Um, we have here Nidalee once more ganking the mid lane after resecuring her second red. Viego's basically going, you know what? Nothing to do here, nothing to do here. Let me just secure the objective. Yone is going to go full on in. GP is going to ult. We have a TB from the rise. Viego's now cutting through from the dragon. The Yone dies. We all enjoy a good dead Yone. We can become said Yone. And then Nidalee moves on up. Now at this point, did she move on up to the crab? Did she move on up to steal my red? Did she move on up to her blue? We don't know. I'm actually curious. There we go. Well, I was wondering if she's going to be super cheeky for that. And rise is... I don't know if he, was if he was thinking about that, but that's obviously, that's good for us. And now we can steal her blue. But that's kind of those cheeky things where they obviously think you ran away to your side of the jungle. We went back to base, but no, they're in your jungle taking your stuff. And that's, this Nidalee's being very, very aggressive. The Viego, by the way, very clearly challenges Smurf, maybe a pro player, Smurf, can, Smurf account based upon the, the level and the win rates. So that's why we're getting these good decisions and these choices. Not that they're always perfect. Um, we have here the Gangplank rotating, takes that away from us. We do have Flash, we do have Alt. See you later. Caution. Whenever you do those kind of things, the enemy is dead. We need to do something we couldn't do if they were alive, like steal their cams. But do pay attention to Lena Rotaciones. Now, moving to your red side. Do the red buff. Could argue that maybe we should do the Krugs into the Raptors, just for good sequencing, but obviously you can do red Krugs Raptors as well. Now, this is interesting. They're fighting. Poppy's pulling up. The Yone means... Ah, we see a ward here. Now, you can see in the particles, and I can see in the particles, that the Nidalee was on the crab, right? Look at this. Sorry, not the crab. The, um... The, um... The Herald. There you go. See? She just used very subtle pathing techniques to navigate the, the, the fog of war. This is absolutely normal stuff. Really, really nice sneak away. And now he goes back to his red thinking, oh, she might have done walls back to Raptors. Really good sneak. If you're any sort of champion with wall hop ability and you see this, they never really expect this. So we ward this. I mean, you can see he's kind of thinking about it, but it's too late. She gets it while well played. Vieg, on the other hand, rotated down to the Yone and the puppy fight. Nothing for us to do. 1-0-0. Zero, zero. Don't worry. We will have a perfect game. This is very much a mind game jungling game because in these kinds of scenarios, and people have been asking me about them a lot lately, what if I'm invaded? What if the enemy junglers are applying a lot of pressure? What if, what if, what if? 
Sometimes the best situation you can have is just be up 30 CS almost, get a kill here and there where you can, try and sneak a dragon and an objective when you can, and keep that lead. Now we do have Noon Quiver and Pickaxe, so, ow, as well as the uh, Agility Cloak. That's it, Cloak of Agility. Always forget the exact names of some of these items. We can fall back down to our blue side, and RNG Crab blesses us with his presence, and um, GB kills Rise because we have Poppy Mid, because they're most likely swapped. Scan on your approach. Dodge the spell. Dodge the spell. This is basically a very obvious read. When the enemy mid goes top lane and the enemy jungle is just on Herald and you took her blue side camp, she's going to be on the bottom side. So, the Soraka is dying a lot. I'd like to give you more analysis. In-depth analysis. But I cannot. She is simply dying a lot. This is a hyper-aggressive dive by the enemy team. I don't know if you necessarily want to be making this. Um, Jin, what are you doing? <laughs> well played, Flash. All right, thank you very much. Let's become the Jin. Obviously, we're ranged here. Let's try and get a stun. We don't get it. She wall hops and disappears. Can we try and get onto the Gragas? No, we miss our ult. That's unfortunate, so no slow for us. But it's Gragas. He has barrel roll. He has infinite slows himself. That's a pretty good scenario for us. Moved on down. We tried to counter gank and did the best we could. The aggression of the enemy team in these scenarios, really, if you can just hold on and not die to it, and I think that's the most important thing here, you will often find yourself in a position to be able to handle it. Kraken Slayer is finished. This is what you want to watch. Even against a Squishy Comp, Kraken Slayer is good. Even against a Squishy Comp, Blade of the Rune King is good, but it's not obviously as good, you know, depending on who you're facing. Obviously, HP stackers are always, you know, more doomed against that item. But in this game, we've got a lot of AD, and I'm not too much concerned about the AP from Gragas nor the Nidli if she's the first one we're focusing in fights, which means Death's Dance will be really, really huge for us for the armor chain. Remember, they changed the passive to be all damage, not just a physical damage. So even if you're against, you know, a hybrid team comp like this one, <laughs> so the Viega was able to do it. Is it enough? 200 years versus 200 years. Yes, it is. He's lucky. Ryze's problem is that he's not 200 years. Maybe the next rework, he can be 200 years. Maybe we can shift it. Anyway, so Death Dance, yes, for the Chain Vest is really, really nice against uh, your armor comps, but the passive does work against all damage now, so you don't only need to go it against all physical, which is something to really, really think about. Yone's going all in again, and will the banana kill? It does not kill. Nidalee's low on mana, being pushed away, and Viego shadowing once more. So this is... This is a really active game, and we're only 2-0-1. But that's fine, because these games are the ones, you know, those games you feel like you could really carry, but you made a mistake, or... These are the games where you have low KP, and the enemy jungle is doing a lot of things, and you don't know how to match them. These are the kind of... This is how you want to play those kinds of games, especially with the damage that we now have. Alright, level 10, no one near 11. We see Blue Buffer spawning. Sorak is basing, so is Poppy. Dragon is available, bot lane has prior. Bottom lane tower is gone. Can we reset and take the dragon? No. No. There's no ways we can afford to do that, not with this particular tempo disadvantage that we have. So let's just go in and steal some blue side camps. We want to get 11 as soon as possible. And there's definitely double plates up top lane, but we're not in a position to secure them. GP's moving. We don't quite know where Nidalee is. Is she doing the dragon? Is she trying to call our bluff and come top side? We don't really know. Which means we set a trap and... Did you see the damage? Why do you need Divine Sandra when that damage exists. No one's matching, you're an assassin. You just kill them with it. It's beautiful, it's easy, it's smooth, and the win rates are closer than I thought they were going to be, I'll be honest with you fully. Nidalee, then bot lane. Bot lane reset, Nidalee was not interested in the dragon and didn't even go for it. So, make the pick, move on down and secure the objective. I'm okay with that. Straight up. We'll be 11, oh, I missed it. There we go. We'll be 11, so we will have our ultimate um, upgraded very, very soon. Once the Grump is secure, that's unfortunately close, actually. You kind of want to make sure you're pushing towers in this situation, but... Red Team's moves to the mid lane, Jin is kiting up, which means you most likely assume he's got some sort of protection there. Nidalee shows up very briefly, so Kaisa needs to be observant, as does Viego. Okay, she's moving to the mid lane, so we can relax again. But this is the kind of thing... Of, these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about in this particular phase. I'm like, I kind of want to reset, you know, start to work on my Death's Dance. Move back up. Well, 99% we're going into Death's Dance, but Phage only builds into Sterex now. This is a great item for Volibear, for Olaf, on the Divine Sundra. Super good item. Super, super good. But it's gone now. So, you, yeah, you have more damage, but you're hyper, hyper squishy, and a Diana and a Viego are just going to melt you, so... 
Kind of sucks, man. But regardless, for Viego. Okay, walked over a control wood, buddy. Hey. Okay, he didn't see it. Guys, check your bushes. This is a great ward that people put either side of the other team can do it. And you can track them so easy because people just don't pay attention to that sort of deep vision at this point in the game. So they knew he was coming, but look, look, look. It doesn't matter, man. When you build like this, it doesn't matter. It is absolutely disgusting the damage. It does require you to be a bit more intelligent with your positioning. You don't have the na natural HP and sustain that you would have in the previous atomization. But that previous atomization no longer exists anyway because items were shifted and changed. And Viego, ever since they nerfed his passive from 8% to 3% flat in terms of the healing, right? You, you get rewarded with more heal by building more damage. Now, it's a little bit reverse psychology sometimes for some people, but it's necessary because the champion was absolutely broken and giga obnoxious. However, when it becomes organized team fighting 5v5, let's have a look at the PTA actually. Then obviously a little bit, not too much, a little bit, you know, can be it can be difficult when you're hyper squishy with no HP. And that's why I think Asterix here in this situation... <laughs> Please build this item. Please build this item. It is better than Divine Sundra unless you're high elo or you're against a super high weird fightery comp where the, the passives can really come together for you. But otherwise, this is beautiful. This is perfect. We still have the Essence Revachine gamers uh, who like to go full crit. That is still a viable option. Wits End, Morph Mamortius, Death's Dawn, Sterex Gate, Guardian Angel. I do feel if you go Blade of the Rune King and Kraken Slayer, you don't really need Wits End. You know, because I feel like you have enough attack speed, and obviously with the passive from Kraken Slayer like giving you even more attack speed, I think you're entering the, the realm of redundancy when it comes to it. And there's more magic resist on the Morph Mortis, and the shield rewards bonus AD. So you've got now, you know, like a Death's Dance and a, and a Kraken Slayer. That's a big Morph Mortis shield, and if any of you face Riven this patch, you know what I mean. I even hit the mic, because I just want to make sure you're listening to me. Okay, Crack and Slay, Death Stone's completed, and now we go into the phage for a bit more sustain. And this is a very classic thing, though. Build a lot of damage when you have it. As the game goes on, you can outkill anyone now. They're all squishy of PTA. Your team, you can kill everyone. 10-10, equal in gold, equal game state. But they can still kill you because they are high damage. So a little bit of HP here really does help, because you do not need more damage. And that's, that's the concept, right? So you're probably looking third, fourth item for this. Plus a BF Sword and a, and, a, and a Guardian Angel would be pretty good. I do think you can justify just going straight up Guardian Angel in this situation. Or a more of a Mortis if you just want a bit more resistance and shield in those fights. But again, there's no right or wrong answer always. It's about how you feel with items and how you play around the game and how you team fight. We do have the Herald. Let's go break and bust open that bottom lane. We shadowed. Very, very nice. Again, the jungle decision making test will deal with this explicitly. He did yeet it to this direction. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite funny. I give him some Kuma D for this one. Um, GB is most likely going to die. We can watch that. Minimap, you'll see other action with the rest of the team pushing out the Yone. Poppy kills the Nidley. So all that hyper aggression, what did it get her? High variance jungling, what did it get her? Now we're going to go chasing a Gangplank. Nothing. Because the Viego didn't let her get anything. And he played it perfectly in terms of denial. The only thing I think we can say is a little different is resetting early for the Noon Quiver for faster farming. Um, and protecting a blue side against counter jungling if we are heading to the opposite side. I think that's the only thing we can kind of think maybe we could do differently, but otherwise he played it perfectly. And now we are 6-0-1. I was going to say, why do we have a Trinity Force, but it always gets me. Dragon is spawning very slowly. Well, shortly, slowly, shortly. Red buff is spawning, which means it's time to push the map. Don't do your wolves, don't full sequence your raptors. Too many times, load the plays in this situation. You kill the gangplank, you're like, blue, wolves, raptors, yeah. No, they're dead. Move in. Get deep vision, set traps. Is this still there? That's still there. <laughs> and now we can secure the objective. And after the objective, you can secure your Gromp and your Wolves should you need it. Um, okay, we miss a W unfortunately, but does it matter? Ah! Gragas has a stopwatch. Okay, Flash. Alright, so that, that earlier... Okay, wait, wait, there you go. And the healing. <laughs> Full HP. Soraka, passive, AD, everything. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, of course, Death Dance as well. I showcase this item combination to you in hopes that more of you Viegos are going to be building this rather than Death's, uh, sorry, Divine Sunder and Sterex Rush. Okay? Let this be a lesson to you all about the combination of these items. Now, we're also on Soul Point. Excellent First Dragon allows that, and I do think people are giving up dragons because they're not as important this season. I mean, they are, but we're working around them, right? We're working around closing games, pushing the map, and that's something I've been pushing for a year now about 
It's okay to give up a dragon. It's okay to give up two dragons. It's okay when you're really leading the game just to take a herald and let them have a pity dragon. And if you have a huge lead, they're never getting that bounty on the dragon anyway because you've pushed the map effectively such that they're not wading through everything to get it alive. And if they do, you messed up. So that's obviously the way we're thinking. But at the same time, if you're a nice scaling team pump with a Soraka, Viego, Kaisa, you've got a Poppy and a Rise. They scale too, but with your lead, you just get a soul. You should be able to close it very easily. Don't take my Raptors, please, Kaisa. That's rude. We have a lead. That's ours. You can have red. We'll give you red because we have her red. Let's schneck on this. Two levels up. 177 CS to 104. So if you want to be a permanent invader, you better make sure damn well you know what you're doing. Uh, Jin just burnt his flash earlier. We know that. We're tracking it. We use our E for some probing. We do like to probe with Viego. Anyway, they run away because they know if they get caught in a W, they're dead. Now, we do have Sterics Gate, so we, let's see the next time we use it, although it seems like it will be a little bit, what happens with the Sterex in this fight. Okay, that's just silly. Kaisa decides to ult that for some peculiar reason, maybe thinking her Evolve Q is going to do enough to melt the Nidalee, but not quite, sweetie. Push the wave out. We have Rice splitting in the bot lane. He does have Prestige TP. Clear the vision here. Very nice. Dodge a spear. Keep your unknownness unknown. And, okay, Gragas is going in. Poppy stuns the Nidalee, which will push her out of the fight. Don't get too caught here, because again, you're squishy. You can't just... You can't just do this to the enemy team and say hello and just unload yourself on them. You are squishy. You need to be a bit more finesse about how you play fights. But this is a perfect opportunity, having pushed the Nidalee out. Thank you very much, Poppy. To fall back to Al Dragon. Uh, them four are pushing up. Nidalee's healing anyway. Rise is splitting on the bot side, waiting for the wave. Pull off if you don't have your ADC. Could you do this 100%? Would it be easier with Kaisa? Of course, but she was baiting. Don't try and coin flip this when you have only three in their sending four. Okay, Viego's flanking. Let's see, do we get some Sterex gauge moments? Okay, be cautious. Again, you see in and out. We're playing it a bit more like an assassin at this stage, and I think that's very, very important. You do have a lot of healing, but you're looking for a pick, a kill, a reset, a healing, and once that starts happening, ain't nobody can deal with you. Steric Gage will aid in that endeavor. GP facing the rise on the bottom lane shows the Yone having to deal with it eventually, and that's why split pushing is good. Someone tweeted that split pushing like a Trinomy was, was the same as Janna top lane smite. I mean, if you can't deal with a split push in season 12, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's not very difficult, but this is a good pull. Soraka, for some reason, is still on the edge of the pit. I don't know why. That's a bad decision. She does really bad positioning. Rise is now also used his Unleashed TP to go in. Here we have the stun. Okay, let's watch. Let's get that kill. Let's get the reset. We're full HP now. We can barrel people, maybe. <laughs> At least you can have a fun mini game when you become GP and you're not really needed in the fights. So, the, do we really need Sterex in this game? No. Is it a solid idea? If you're anticipating a good team fight in a reasonably close game, yes, just because that health plus a shield, while it won't be gargantuan, will at least be enough to keep you alive, uh, to go with your resistances and your innate um, sort of healing. Here we kind of are slow to trail, and Yona's going in, and now we're in a bit of a bind, but here comes VA Joe. Ah, uh, you're in the wrong position. Okay, we're going to kill you. We don't necessarily want to become Nidalee if there's someone else to kill, but he died anyway, and now we can carry on pushing. So, there you go. Sterex. Proving itself to be largely useless here, actually. But if you are really snowballing and you trust yourself to be cautious with your positioning, then more of my mortis in a GA for full squish. I mean, look, look at this. Like, do you need HP versus that if you can kill him off of one go? No, you do not. Minions? Ah, sustain. You see, this is where it becomes an issue because you're squishy and he's not kiting you out and he can actually kill you. So the Sterex here does aid quite a bit, but... This is specifically high elo Korea, and obviously we'll get a bit of HP going from our... I mean, we could easily flash smite him, but why? <laughs> and the healing. You see? The healing. Huge. And soul is up, and it's an ocean soul, which is absolutely disgusting on a Soraka. If you can get ocean soul on a Soraka, absolutely disgusting. So, this was less about jungling, but hopefully we've got enough jungling in here for all of you, but also a lot about the atomization choices you can make as a fighter and as a Viego, and just talking about the thought process, pros and cons, about, about all the different variations that we might have. Now, I don't like here that we're falling back into our jungle camps. What if, what's our goal? 2-1, two, 2-2. Two, two. You can buy a BF sword and a stopwatch, but our whole team is ready to push up, and this is where you kind of don't want to overcommit too much. The Baron is up. 
We just got soul. Let's go get our BF soul. We leave the blue for rise and a stopwatch. Perfect. Actually, then, you know, that's what I would buy in this situation because why? The damage spike is great with our HP. Now, definitely, we one shot people and we don't die. And the stopwatch enables us to avoid a high variance play that just gives the enemy team a comeback me mechanism. You know, that whole GA rush discussion I've had many, many times on this channel and on the main channel when you're snowballing. A GA early, third item even, can just st stop watching the GA, can just stop a random fight, a troll fight, a, a weird fight from giving the enemy shutdowns. Because they might be able to kill you once through this unique event, but can they kill you twice when you revive? No, no they cannot, because you're at least too big, and you have Ocean Soul, right? And a Soraka. Those are the things you got to think about when you're itemizing. It's not always cut and dry cookie cutter, but definitely um, Kraken Slayer, Blade of the Rune King against more HP stackers, and obviously Dust Dance against this kind of team comp. Beautiful, love it, huge damage, and as long as you're good with your team fighting, you should have no issue. Uh, Alright, you're basically unkillable at this stage. If there was more AP worth really, like a, like a big threat AP, you could argue with this particular build, Wits End would be really nice um, as a finishing item or just w within the build path at some, to some degree because we have Death Dance, we have Sterax, we don't really need them more. We lack a bit of attack speed from not going Blade of the Rune King. Okay. Nidley, you're out of position. Okay, here we go. We get ulted in, we get the heal, we got a very baby shield. Did you see that? We'll look at it again. The shield was, was minimal. Um, the stopwatch is absolutely huge for us, and it keeps us alive. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. That HP, while the shield wasn't ginormous, nice W, very, very nice. And from here, they surrender. So let's just look at that again, because we're not going to miss anything. It's not the shield, it's the HP, right? We, we've basically got, what do we have? We have four, sorry, I said 500 HP earlier. 400 HP, of course. Why did I say 500 HP? In my mind, I kind of wish it was, I think. <laughs> so that's obviously very good here. We go for the stun. All right, it's only a 300 baby shield. There we go, and you know, <laughs> it's 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 very very small, you know. But when you come out of it, obviously Soraka's ult helps a lot in the fact you've ocean soul. But now, like in this situation, right, you've stopped watched, and you're at 641 without Soraka's ult, without that 400 HP, you're dangerously and precariously close to death. So even though the shield is nonsensical, um, just a little bit, that HP itself is good. So. I'm not a big fan of necessarily rushing, actually don't rush it, please don't rush it second, you just really don't need to anymore. But survivability through HP and resistances is always a good thing to think about. Yeah. Beautiful game. Hopefully some fruitful discussion on itemization and its versatility, something you always have to stay connected to. There you go. Let me know what you think about these new Viego runes. Conquer is obviously good, your standard rune, where are we going? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Streams will be on every Wednesday and every second Tuesday. New video for decision making on the main channel tomorrow, Wednesday, so keep an eye out for that. It will include a Viego. In what capacity, I won't tell you, but it does include a Viego. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.